What do you make of the sell-off? Do you think it's just kind of we're getting to the quarter end, people are just kind of shedding some assets, or, or is there something bigger that, that we're worried about right now? Right now, I guess it's a mix. Like what, what we see last night, we, we saw the uh, Treasury yield uh, holding higher. And actually, it's actually similar to what happened in February when we saw like the speed of the uh, uh, Treasury yield uh, um, quickening. Mm -hmm. And um, over the seven, past seven days, we see um, the Treasury yields actually uh, going quite fast. And so this is one, one, one factor. I think a few worries are adding to the list of um, the uh, investors' uh, recipe. Mm. For example, inflation worries and also the rising treasury yields. And also, uh, also the, uh, even though we see actually COVID actually uh, subsiding, COVID impact subsiding, but actually uh, all, a lot of, for example, China growth concerns continue to be uh, striking or actually uh, worrying investors. So as, especially uh, in the past few days, we saw the China power curbs news that continue to actually be uh, scaring investors about uh, the supply chain disruptions, whether that's going to continue and inflation expectations going forward. Yeah, and I'm um, looking at the, I mean, 153 for the U.S. 10-year. You talked about the melt-up has been quite uh, picking up pace. I'm just wondering at what point do you think that you're going to see foreign investors like Japan start to look at this and, and start buying on these levels? But we've seen that before. But I'm guessing given the gains that we're seeing in the equity market, do you think this time could actually be different? Um, this time compared to, I guess, February, I guess mostly we can compare about the speed is pretty similar. Yeah. But then right now, uh, Mark is more concerned about on the equity side, there are different worries that are uh, compared to February when mm. people are slightly more optimistic in a way that of the COVID and uh, but now the COVID seems to actually be subsiding. So hopefully it will get better in this sense. But then there are actually other worries with the supply chain. Yeah. And so going forward, I think equity will slightly will remain quite choppy. But then regarding to like there has been like um, um, mentioning about stagflation. Yeah. But frankly, like we're still trying to buy into this argument. Like, OK, stack wise uh, growth, um, the, actually the absolute growth levels actually remain quite decent. Yes, it has been coming down. We see different growth, like the Vietnam GDP coming down. And then uh, also different growth expectations have been revised down. But actually, it's just a revision down from the peak expectations. And then with the inflation-wise, we see that actually, yes, we, there, there has been different inflation concerns, with supply chain disruptions, et cetera. But then we're still trying to split between like whether there's temporary price adjustment mm. and whether that's actually entrenched higher price and how is that going to affect the wage price setting. This is still, we're still trying to buy into this argument. Also, I mean, how much in your outlook and your strategy are you looking currently what the path of the dollar is? And the dollar's been strengthening and it's, it's I think, highs of uh, about, around about a year or thereabouts. Yeah, uh, going forward, like in the near term with the price, uh, with the actually the uh, rate hike or the tapering going forward um, happening potentially starting uh, the announcement in November and uh, potentially tapering uh, going afterwards, uh, we continue to expect uh, the rate hike uh, to uh, actually uh, uh, Push the treasury yields higher, and um, and regarding this, what should help We're support the U.S. Really dollar? Far ahead, then, aren't <laughs> yeah. they? I mean, we, because there is no correlation apparently anyway between selling off or uh, reducing the bond purchases and then normalisation of the monetary policy. I think right now, market has already priced in the tapering uh, argument or expectations. Right now, market is uh, looking forward to more like to the expectation of the rate hikes, yeah. and after that, actually, the more or slightly more hawkish they expected uh, Fed meeting last week. Actually, market was actually having a bit more clarity on the movement going forward. But still, they are pricing in a higher uh, rate hike level uh, uh, by the end of 2022 till 2024. Do you subscribe to that, though? Because we still see the market not exactly converging with the dots, right? I mean, do you think that there's still some doubt that they actually can hike rates uh, in the next year or two? I think they should do so, but then that, that's always the case that we need to see because there are so many moving parts going forward. Like everything happening in the past week. Uh, last week, if I come on onto the TV, I'll be talking about the big property developer. <laughs> and then today, uh, questions were about like the power crunch and yeah. the power, power curve. So 
every every day has a different news. So well, I mean, you know, when we get to oil at what? I mean, it was 80 bucks yesterday for Brent and to come down a little bit from that. But that's almost an interest rate hike in itself, isn't it? Especially with a country like America where there is so much driving going on that we're out of the driving season now. Yeah. And especially with regards to China, in particular with yeah. this uh, power curbs going on. And we actually continue to expect that will actually might eat into, for example, the manufacturing sector, which has been a relatively well-performed economic sector I mean, it's compared happening to in others. Europe as well, this, this gas it seems and like energy a crisis. Phenomenon. But you're still preferring at least Europe as a bright spot. Can, can it stay that way, though, given just what we've been seeing in the UK? Europe, and we are more positive in a way. We have to actually have been uh, talking about Europe since last time I came, like yeah. maybe one or two months ago. But um, I guess with Asia investors, it's still slightly harder with the home buyers, etc. It's still harder to buy, for them to buy into the argument. But then we still continue to see Europe to be uh, uh, relatively, uh, in, in terms of economic momentum, is actually picking up quite decently. And then it's actually with the ECB is actually joining the club of tapering central banks. So, um, so that, that suggests that uh, they see that economic momentum might actually be picking up and we'll also continue to monitor whether there might be some inflation expectations that might affect their outlook as well.